Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Retro Look. And today we will be looking at Super Mario Brothers. And it's the Super Mario Brothers 35th anniversary today. And I would like to look back on one of the most influential games of all time that shaped the Mario series as a whole. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. Super Mario Bros. was the first game in the Super Mario series, and was originally a spin-off of Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. It released on the NES on September 13, 1985, and was a launch title for the American release of the NES. Super Mario Bros. is considered as being the most influential game of all time, and sold over 40 million copies. It was actually the best-selling video game until Wii Sports eventually outsold it. Since Super Mario Bros. is a really important game, let's also look back on the history behind it. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, arcade games were very popular, and this was when video games initially started the rise in popularity. In 1983, the video game industry crashed due to oversaturation of video game consoles on the market and lack of trust of the consumer. Nintendo then went on to create their first true home console, the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Famicom in Japan. This helped save the gaming industry since Nintendo introduced the seal of quality to ensure all of their licensed products were genuine. In 1985, Nintendo wanted a completely new, original game for the system, and Miyamoto designed a platforming game that had a similar scrolling effect as Excitebike. The player was originally meant to be a square, but they then chose Mario instead since he was a more recognizable character since he previously appeared in Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. was ahead of its time, and had many different features and objects seen throughout the game. The story was very straightforward, as Mario travels across eight different worlds to defeat Bowser and save the princess. Super Mario Bros. only has two returning characters, being Mario and Luigi, while Peach, Toad, and Bowser are completely new to the game. This game introduced 12 enemies, and almost all of them appear in most Mario games. These enemies include Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Piranha Plants, Paratroopas, Bloopers, Cheep Cheeps, Spinies, Buzzy Beetles, Potabos, Bullet Bills, Lakitus, and Hammer Bros. The items include Coins, Super Mushrooms, Flowers, Starmans, and 1-Up Mushrooms. This game only has different forms of Bowser for each of its boss fights that get slightly harder in each world. Super Mario Bros. also has a hard mode that is unlocked after beating the final boss of the game, and this replaces all Goombas with Buzzy Beetles and makes the enemies walk slightly faster. It also has a two-player mode where you can take turns playing the game as Mario and Luigi. Overall, this game takes about an hour and a half to beat, while using warps it can only take 20 minutes to beat. The speedrunning community of Super Mario Bros. is popular, and the current world record as of recording this video is 4 minutes, 55 seconds, 646 milliseconds by Cosmic. There are a few glitches in Super Mario Bros., but the most notable is undoubtedly the Minus World. The Minus World is an underwater level that is endless, that is accessed by clipping through the pipe at the end of the level in World 1-2. This glitch is possible on every version of the game based on the original ROM, and that includes the Nintendo Switch Online, but it's slightly different in the Japanese version. Super Mario Bros. had many different remakes, re-releases, and versions on different consoles throughout the years. The original version of the game is playable on the NES, GBA, Wii, 3DS, Wii U, and Switch. An arcade version of the game, called Vs. Super Mario Bros, was released in 1986 and is also available on the Nintendo Switch. 
1993, it was remade in the Super Mario All-Stars Collection on the SNES, which improved graphics, music, and physics. This version is also available on the Wii and the Nintendo Switch. In 1999, it was re-released on the Game Boy Color as Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, and included extra modes and content. This version is also available on the 3DS. So currently, there are many different versions of Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. influenced the Mario series as a whole, and also impacted the video game series, since platformers like Super Mario Bros. spawned and created new series and genres. Super Mario Bros. is referenced in some way in almost every Mario game, and every five years, the Super Mario Bros. anniversary is celebrated, like the 35th anniversary this year, in 2020 and going into early 2021. So now, we are actually going to play Super Mario Bros. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so now we are in the original Super Mario Bros. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll do one player here. Now we're in the most iconic level in video game history, World 1-1. This level is remade a million times in Super Mario Maker and Super Mario Maker 2. Well, we're just gonna play through here, then there's a 1-up mushroom right here. Okay, we got the fire flower. So overall, this is actually, like, this level is actually really well designed for, like, its first level, because it, it's introducing, like, all the basic things about Mario in this level. Like, all the basic power-ups and movements and everything. Like, it shows off bottomless pits for the first time, and the, the fire flower mushroom star one-up mushroom. It's really just, like, a level to show off, basically, what Mario is. That's also the same with World 1-2, and World 1-2 is basically showing off the secrets that are in Mario. Because it's showing, like, there's, like, different paths to take in the level, so... Like, one of the ways you can beat this level is go over the top of it and just go that way if you know how to do it. Or you can just play the level normally. And then this way, there's, like, multiple ways to go through there, so we're gonna slide through here. Or actually, just go up here. But, but this level is also really well designed, too, because, like, as I said, there's multiple different ways to go in this level. Like, here there's, like, a secret area. This also introduces, like, the piranha plants as, like, a main enemy in this level. Then we also have the lifts here too. And then you could take those lifts up to the secret exit, but we're just going through the pipe here. You could also, right at that pipe there, you could also do the minus world glitch. And I actually did the glitch for recording footage of this video. It's actually really easy to pull off. But if you want to do it properly, like, and if you're not really good at doing it, you might have to use a rewind feature so you don't run out of time. Even though, like, finding glitches is technically cheating anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you're using the rewind feature when you're doing that. This is the first athletic level, or the first sky level. I really like the designs of the mushrooms in the sky levels. I feel like they brought that to a lot of the semi-solids in Super Mario Maker 2 and the original Mario Maker. But I feel like they use more of them in Super Mario Maker 2. Here we go. And now on to World 1-4, the first castle in the game. Okay, so now we're on World 1-4. Okay, there we go.
Okay, so here's Bowser. Just go over this. There we go. That was... Like, the Bowser in each castle in each world is technically a fake Bowser. And then we just we got Toad here saying, Our princess is in another castle. That famous line there. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And also make sure to check out my Twitter and Discord server because I post some good stuff over there too. So thank you guys for watching and goodbye. But let's not forget the best thing that came out of Super Mario Bros.